Hey, what's going on guys? For today's MOOC review, we're taking a look at another issue of Gundam Weapons. This one is all about the DOM, the Master Grade DOM. So it's another older issue here, so we'll see a lot of older model kits of the DOM, of course, and then some other cool stuff in here as well. If you guys are Xeon Mobile Suit fans especially, you will like this issue. Let's go ahead and get into it here for today's video. Right, so here on the cover, of course, we've got the Black TriStar team of three DOMs there. I'm going to assume that that's by Max Watanabe, as we've seen in uh, previous issues. He used usually is doing the models that are on the front, but we'll find out here in just a minute once we get to the inside. List price here for this is 1,429 yen. We have a preview of a cool diorama we're gonna see inside there with a dom with a big massive chainsaw about to slice up a gym there apparently. I just wanna check out the date for when this was printed. Released in October 1999. All right, pretty cool. So on the inside of our dust jacket, let's see. It's just the titling without the photo. And we can get into it here. So a kind of cool image there on the front. And on the inside here, another photo of those kits. And we can see in the credits down here that, yep, that's by Max Watanabe, model assist by Kazuo Sakuma, and a few others there, but cool photo there of the Black TriStars team. The 1.0 Master Grade DOM, I've always said since I've built one uh, myself in my experience with that is that I think that it's an old, older Master Grade that stands the test of time very well. I mean, there's points where it's definitely improved uh, with the 1.5 and the 1.5 is, is definitely the better version, of course, but the 1.0, not bad at all for its age. So, I mean, if you're looking to get a Master Grade DOM, you can only find the 1.0. I would say definitely check it out. It's probably going to be a little bit cheaper than the 1.5. That said, of course, 1.5 is yeah the better version. Here's the prototype DOM over here. That one looks like that is a custom build based off of the Master Grade. And I assume we'll probably see a little bit more about that. This introduction section, I think, is just going to be kind of a little bit of like DOM history and development, I guess. So we've got a whole bunch of text here, obviously, in Japanese. Uh, we got the DOM, the Rick DOM, the Dwaj, and the Dwaj Custom the Dom Tropin down here as well. So yeah, you can see a few of the different models which we'll see in more detail as we get kind of some more into here. So next section here is about the development of the model kit, the master grade Dom. So we've got the box art down here. These are the production images that you would see like on the box or this would be like the one that's on the insert on the inside of the box, I believe. Uh, here we have like the pr uh, prototype there of it and kind of interesting to see all the detail images of the uh, decals and everything here as well about the hands. The hands were pretty revolutionary. I imagine at the time those were pretty nice hands again for such an old master grade kit. Doesn't have the full inner frame but it's got some nice inner frame details certainly around in some sections especially there in the lower leg as there's plenty of space to put more stuff inside of there. It's weapons, it's pilot figure and then over here we've got the Rick Dom variant as well. So love that beam bazooka that that has. All right, so our first kind of quote unquote custom model here, or the first one, which is not the production model of the DOM. This one is by Keisuke Watanabe, not Max Watanabe. I don't know if there's any relation. I would assume not. I think Watanabe is just a relatively common uh, surname in Japan, but looks like one of the things he did was to add some LED lights in both the mono eye and it looks like in the backpack there as well. So that's kind of cool modification there. I do like the two little white stripes there on the top of the head. It's kind of common, just like a painting modification, decal modification there on the DOM. That always looks pretty cool. You can see some of the work just done on extending the bicep a little bit, removing the seam line on the shoulder, some slight modifications to the proportions there, uh, just basically in the bicep, really. It's the only place. Oh, no, it's not an extension in the bicep. That is just, I thought there was a layer of plot plate that we were seeing in the bicep, but it's actually just a uh, stripe. There's a decal, like, pinstripe that wraps around the bicep there. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, this one is, these are the ones that are from the cover, modeled by Max Watanabe. So we've got the three different units, the one with the 60, the 12, and the 25 there for the numbering for those. But pretty interesting how they're otherwise, I mean, it, to make a finished model like this, like a model for like production in a book like this, to make one is one thing, but then to have to make three basically identical models is... Uh, I'm sure it took a little bit of time, but these are pretty awesome looking. They got some really cool decals on here as well. You can see if we go back to the production model images, uh, just as a reminder, the these decals are not included with this. So I wonder what these decals are. This must have been 
uh, painted on, but they look like actual water slide decals. Uh, so I wonder how those were made, or if those were from a different kit, or what would they have been from? I'm not sure what the red lining decals are around, because you can't just use like a straight line decal and just like bend it around like that. I don't think that that would quite work, but you can tell like looking really close, it's probably going to be hard for you guys to see, but you can see that it's a water slide decal and not just masked and painted as far as I can tell. So I wonder what those decals are from. Again, it would be nice to be able to read the Japanese. So I'm sure if I do some translating there, I can find out where those decals are from. But I wonder if they would be from, I don't know, some set that maybe came out at the time. Maybe someone put out a set uh, when this kit was released. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Looks like one of the modifications that he made, for example, was to make the thighs a little bit thicker there. You can see there's a little bit of work in progress. Uh, basically, over here is a comparison with the original and the new one. You can see the thigh is definitely thicker on the modified version. Uh, another work in progress photo up here shows that there was a little bit of reshaping done on like the top of the chest and the top of the shoulders. So again, when you're doing modification like that, aside from like just modeling it and painting it, but then like custom modifying it as well, times three is a lot of work. And then you have to make the matching and everything. All right, here we've got a Dom. This one is a, a conversion modeled by Yukio Ageta. Again, a familiar name that we've seen in different issues before. There's the last of Max's Doms over here, a couple more images of those. And then yeah, our chainsaw Dom here with some jet engines like attached onto the side of the leg. Some of the leg armor looks to be kind of cut away a bit, either that or he's extended the ankle. So there's quite a bit more like gap there between the lower leg and the foot it looks like. This chainsaw weapon, I wonder if that's that chainsaw weapon from that Evangelion kit. I don't think that it is, but it certainly reminds me of that. Here we got a nice big, no text, full two page spread here image of the Dom with the chainsaw and the gym there in the foreground. Pretty cool. Yeah, aside from the chainsaw, it's got this kind of big uh, rocket launcher over there with that very large strap. If you think about this like in scale, that's like a two foot wide nylon strap for this bazooka a little doesn't quite make sense like in scale but it looks cool anyway i can get behind that and the jet engines which i'm sure are taken from some like airplane aircraft model and then uh, attached onto the legs there that's pretty interesting as well all right here we've got our fold out poster page here on the one side it is a dom and a musai that's a 1 100 scale scratch build cruiser musai a bridge prop model sculpted by Mitsuaki Misaki. That's pretty awesome when you see those like scratch build ships like that. On the other side here, a winter scene with some doms in the winter time. This one by Takuji Yamada, titled Evacuation. Pretty cool there. Uh, they're the one doms carrying the Zaku here, which is kind of funny. Interesting that they would do that. I mean, like thinking about it again, like realistically in like a wartime scenario would they bother, I don't know, I, I suppose, carrying the mobile suit. I mean, they would want to salvage it, right? But I don't know. Oh, here we got some more photos of that. So you can kind of see it a little bit more clearly here in this not like stylized photo, but you can see it's a Zaku 1 that the Dom is carrying into like this kind of icy river, no less. And I guess the other one's saying, hey, no, go that way, not into the water. Anyway, <laughs> 0079 in Russia. So. Yeah, interesting scene, very cool. Went to see some doms in the winter time and there's kind of, a, I guess it's just meant to look like snow or like kind of frost. I'm not sure if that's meant to be like painted on, you know, winter camo on the other dom, but quite heavily stylized with the weathering on that, like very thick weathering on these. You have the cutoff gym or Gundam shield, the EFSF shield over there cut and stuck in the snow. A few more photos here of that interesting scene anyway. It's just, it's not something that I've ever really seen before, definitely not very often, to see a mobile suit just like carrying another mobile suit like that. So it's certainly unique, interesting uh, idea there for that. And here's some more photos of the Cruiser Musai bridge prop model, Dren and Agitant. Those are 1 8th scale model kits of the figures, 1 100 scale Dom with the Musai bridge. That's pretty awesome. That's a ton of work scratch building this whole thing, but man, it makes for some really cool photography, no doubt with all of that. So that's really cool. You got some small 100 scale figures that go inside the bridge there as well. Of course, some lighting inside there. 
That's pretty awesome. All right, so now we got a Rickdom damaged model by Hiroshi Sarai. So this one has some kind of cool damage uh, over here on the side of the leg. It's got some kind of weathering going on throughout. You can see up there in the photo, but it's pretty cool how it looks like he used just like some actual metal to replace some of the frame parts on that to make it look kind of more realistic there for that. It looks like some damage here on the backpack as well. That's pretty cool how that part is removed and kind of looked like it maybe like blown away or something or removed for whatever reason uh, on top of one of the thrusters there on the backpack for example and then for like these vent details on the back skirt and the back of the leg that's pretty awesome too kind of custom detail added on there again looks like with like metal plates for that and how they have it uh, kind of looking very damaged and all bent up and everything like that looks really cool but like from the front you know obviously you can see the side of the leg but the front side is not like too there's not like too much heavy damage aside from the leg that you can see but from the back with like the vents and everything it just looks a lot more you know kind of realistically weathered i don't know like it's definitely spent some time on the battlefield which is pretty awesome all right so here we got another just regular dom modeled by yukia nakayama and it's in a very stylistic pose, one that I'm not sure that you could do with just the base model. So this one's probably gonna, we're gonna see some customization done. Yeah, definitely with the skirting armor like that uh, to make the look like this. There's a lot of modification done and unfortunately not any more photos than just that. So no work in progress photos, but I mean, you can tell that at the very least, the skirt armor and the torso is all heavily modified to make it look like that. The legs, I'm sure, are modified as well. It's kind of harder to tell. Those look like pretty much like as they are. The arms, I'm sure, are pretty much uh, standard there. But definitely to the torso and the waist, to get a pose like that is certainly going to take a lot of modification in the hands there as well. So now we're getting into some more dumb modifications over here. First of all, this one looks pretty cool there. Let's see what we got going on. So we got a prototype DOM here. This is a 100 scale plastic kit uh, converted from the Master Grade DOM. So yeah, this is the one that we saw before uh, by Kazuyoshi Unodo. And I wonder if this used any of the parts from the 100 scale kit. No, it looks like it's all just, uh, just custom built, scratch built on top of the Master Grade DOM. So you can see all the custom and scratch building, everything going on. There's a couple of work in, work in progress photos down here for that but it looks pretty awesome it came out great uh the especially the leg details like the vent details that goes around on the leg on the prototype dumb i'd imagine it would be a very challenging part to build on top of that you have different shapes like for the forearms the backpack obviously the shoulders the chest i mean there's very little of the original dom that would be recognizable here with this one it looks like for the feet he did use the feet maybe of an old 100 scale kit those almost look like they're 100 scale gelgug uh feet from like an 80s uh, Gelgug kit, possibly. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. But really cool looking kit there. It would be nice to get an actual Master Grade prototype DOM at some point. And this one as well, the Tropical Test Type. So there are like old 80s 144 scale MSV kits of these. Uh, the prototype DOM, I believe there's one 100 scale kit as well, though I'm not sure. I don't remember offhand. But this one, yeah, it's a really interesting, unique design. This one is even more like stylized than what you have like on like the original artwork in the kit, I believe. But it's a really cool MSV design that I would love to have like a newer proper kit of that. HGUC would be awesome. Uh, I would be totally happy with just like an HGUC kit, but obviously a Master Grade kit would be awesome as well. Really cool backpack here for that. That's really quite interesting looking. And then of course this big massive gun that he's got there as well. Really, really cool modifications and everything going on on that. All right, now we've got this Dom Tropen here, modeled by Hiroyuki Noda. This one as well, of course, we don't have a Master Grade version of this, so this is just based off of the Master Grade Dom and custom modified into the Dom Tropen here. So again, a ton of work you can imagine had to go into this to get that you know, modified. Very little of the original Dom would be able to be used in this. Basically like the joints and parts of the frame, maybe like the uh, thighs, parts of the arms maybe. But I don't know, yeah, not a whole lot. Basically the entire thing would have to mostly be scratch built. So that's pretty impressive. The Dwaj here, which we do have a Master Grade of, we did finally get Master Grades of the Dwaj and the Dwaj Kai as the P Bandai kits. And that's what eventually gave us the 1.5 versions of the Dom and the Dom Tropen, or sorry, the uh, Rick Dom, I should say. But so that was awesome. This looks really cool. I, I gotta say though, Bandai did a really good job on the Dwaj and Dwaj Kai Master Grade kits. Really cool, really good looking kits. 
I don't want to say better looking than this, but I'm really happy with what we got from Bandai. I'll just say that. This is really awesome looking though. And of course, I mean, considering that this was all just custom made, scratch built and everything, the Dwaj Kai here, the Dwaj Custom here as well. It's pretty impressive. Really uh, quite a funky gun that the Dwaj Kai has there, uh, this one. And it looks even funkier here just because of how kind of like proportionally different it is from what we got in the Bandai kit. It's very big, chunky, very strangely proportioned gun there. Very MSV, very like A80s MSV, yeah, for sure. Those big vents on the back of the torso, really cool, those shoulder parts, everything. Really, really cool designs. Definitely worth checking out if you guys are fans of the designs. I uh, highly recommend the Master Grade kits, even though they're P-Bandai. And probably relatively difficult to get because I think they were only printed once. I don't think they've ever been reprinted at all as far as I can remember. We have a Rick Dom 2 here, once again just based off of the Master Grade Dom. These are kits that we do not have Master Grades of and probably won't at any point. I will say the Rick Dom 2, not one of my favorite Dom kind of variants uh, or versions, but it is pretty cool. The shoulders are weird, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it'll be one of those kits or one of those designs that grows on me with time. Maybe if I build one, I know there's a HGUC kit. Maybe if they come out with a master grade or if I ever build the HGUC, maybe I'll gain some more appreciation for it. Here's a Shars Rickdom modeled by Moto Osmi. And then speaking personally on this one, not a big fan of like all like these small bolt details around on it. Kind of a little visually busy and distracting. I don't know, not to my personal taste here for Gunpla design but certainly quite interesting and unique. That backpack, very cool. Sort of looks akin to like something we would see in Gundam Thunderbolt. This is kind of nice to see. Not enough work in progress photos in these books, I will say. Uh, to my, for, for me, I wish we could see some more work in progress because I like seeing stuff like this where you can see you know, the model and then with all the plot plate bits and everything, all the modifications, you can all see very clearly on there. That's nice to see. All right, there's a couple more photos here of that, specifically with that big massive gun. Uh, which looks to be like that's all scratch built as well. And then we've got a Drayson. So this is a 144 scale. So this would be the old 144 scale kit and just you know, made nicer. So uh, there is a 144 scale model kit here of the old 80s kits. There you can see the original kit and then this custom model. So yeah, the, I will say the old 80s kit, I mean like proportionally in details and everything doesn't look too bad. And you can see between the two, uh, it's basically just like nicely modeled and nicely painted. I'm sure there was definitely a lot of work that went into, um, you know, customizing it by changing some proportions and things like that. But it looks really good, I gotta say. Really nice work on that and that big, massive beam axe there on that. Very cool. Black uh, mobile suits for the Black Tri Stars. So here we have Guya, Mush, and Ortiga. The old spelling there for their names in English. And we've got some of their mobile suits, so the Zaku 1s, the Zaku 2, and the Dom over here, different Black Tri-Stars models. Uh, and these are uh, all molded, all modeled by different people. I'll say, well, these two are both by Moto Osumi. This one is by Keisuke Watanabe. And so we've got a little bit more of the Dom, and then over here we're gonna see some more of, I guess we're gonna see some more of all of those mobile suits which, which we just saw. So now we're gonna see some of the Zaku 1, the Black Tri-Stars use. This is the Bandai Master Grade 1.0. Model kit here, which we still do not have a 2.0 of the Zaku 1, unfortunately. Really, really hope that Bandai will eventually make a 2.0 Zaku 1 at some point. It's kind of a shame that we don't have one yet, but it's something to look forward to. And hopefully variations of that. So hopefully not just one, but hopefully we'll see a few different variations of that. Like we've seen with the Zaku 2 2.0, we have a lot of different versions of that, which is great. It'd be great to see that for the 1.0 as well, but here we have the Zaku 2 Black Tri-Star use. This one is by Toru Sada, which is making me wonder if on the previous page that was a mistake here because this is credited. Let's see, make sure it's the same model. Yeah, it definitely looks like the same model. Here it's credited as modeled by Moto Osumi, and here it's credited by Toru Sada, and I would assume that they had a different modeler for each one of these, the Zaku 1, Zaku 2, and the Dom. So this is probably correct, and that was probably a misprint on the previous page. Interesting. A nice model here of the high mobility type, Zaku 2, uh, of course 1.0 kit, which I just recently worked on. So 
Uh, that was not too bad a kit for sure. The 2.0 is definitely nicer, but uh, here we have the Zaku 2 Special Weapons test type. So of the three mobile suits here. So we're gonna see, this is like sort of similar to like what we eventually got with the HG Origins versions of the Zaku 2 Black Tri-Stars version, how they had like different uh, like custom weapons for each one. So this is kind of similar to like the anti-ship rifle, I guess uh, like what we saw with the HG kit. And it has this special camera that goes in front of the mono eye there on the head, which is pretty awesome. That's kind of cool. And then we've got, yeah, this is very similar to like what we saw with the Origins kits. So this one with all the bazooka ammo and like the double bazookas on both sides. So it's just all bazookas and missiles and everything. So that's got that. And then this one a little bit different in that we had the giant axe, but we didn't have this like fold down mask and the Zaku shoulders, which can attach onto the hands to be used as like melee punching gauntlets kind of thing. So that's unique, but we did get the giant axe. So yeah, kind of interesting how we did eventually sort of get kind of versions of these in uh, HG The Origins kits. So we got some Gelgoog action in here as well, which I'm always here for. We got the Black Tri-Stars use Gelgoog. Not a thing, I'm not sure if that's even canon, if there was ever any Black Tri-Stars Gelgoog. Um, but hey, you can make one, sure, why not? So this is just the 1.0 Gelgoog, uh, painted in Black Tri-Stars colors, basically. Uh, I'm sure there's some other modification and stuff in here as well, but uh, yeah, I don't know if there was ever, like, canonically any Black Tri-Stars version of the Gelgoog. I'm not sure, you guys can let me know. All right, next Master Grade is the Alex, which, of course, uh, was not that good of a kit by all accounts as far as everything that I've heard about the 1.0 Alex. So yeah, it's nice that we have the 2.0 Alex out now. Now we're getting to the articles section where, as you guys have seen in past issues, this is basically a section where it goes through like some of the kits uh, that were in here. And it's just more information like from the modelers, I guess talking about the kits. So here's uh, Max Watanabe's set there. And it just kind of goes through Got a cool little kind of illustration over there also. But just some more text from the modelers talking about their kits. So cool information if you want to go in and translate all the Japanese on that. But it's going to be information about each one of these. And uh, a lot of times, I'm not sure, I'd have to go back and double check, but a lot of times like the photos used for these are also different from, it's not like they just reuse the same photo as what you saw earlier, but they're actually different photos. So you get like a little bit different pose or whatever uh, from what you've already seen in past photos all the way to the Gelgoog here at the end. Oh, and our Black Tri-Stars Zaku 2 is there. And then the design works, a very cool section here at the end with a bunch of line art and illustrations. So we've got some line art illustrations, technical illustrations here of the Dom. Unfortunately, a very short section in this book. Uh, in other issues we've seen, there's like multiple pages of these. In this one, unfortunately, it's just this single page, and that's it. After that, it's credits, and that's it for this issue of Gun and Weapons. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much. Let me know in the comments uh, which was your favorite dom of all these. There's a whole lot of doms featured in this book. So let me know if you're just a fan of the original or if there's a particular variant that you really like. I do really like those MSV doms, I gotta say, but as always guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. Make sure that you ring the bell if you want to not miss any future videos like this. You can also like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Guys, thank you all so much for your support. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me, checking out this book full of cool models of Dom variants. And so anyway, that's gonna be it for today. Have a good one guys. See you later, bye.